What up, gang? This is Ken Zark, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milligan, and Finnafin and Trilligan, and we are back on Umi Neku no Naku Koro Ni, or Umi Neku when the seagulls cry. Last episode, we did a little thing. We, we know we had some introductions. Legend of the Golden Witch. Last episode, we had introductions to our characters, and we got on a plane for a little family reunion. So let's, so we, I, I, think, I, I think where I left off was exiting the plane. So let's see what pops off here. Okay, let's see if I remember his voice. Should have taken a boat. The boat. Fall! Fall! She's so good. Maria, that's enough. Hold on. But what a surprise. I thought there was nothing that could scare Battler. This guy can't handle vehicles for some reason. Always yells about falling and sinking and stuff. You're a disgrace of a man, you are. That is wild. Shut up! That thing was seriously shaking way too much. I, I just got a little stressed. This is my first time on a small plane like that. While I'm recording is insane. Go fly your chopper somewhere else. You call that a little stressed? <laughs> Sounds like it'd be fun to take an overseas vacation with you, Battler. Would you like to go to Egypt with your aunt? She is bad. You'd get a ride. You'd get to ride the plane for full four. Fuck! You'd get a ride. You'd get to ride a plane for a full fourteen hours. <laughs> That's a good plan. Battler, you should go. You should go let Ava toughen you up, son. Still, it's so hilarious. Hold on. No, no. Every, everybody got their own strong and weak points. It's bad to laugh at him. <laughs> While laughing is insane. Dad, you're laughing too. Hey, Maria, you shouldn't laugh anymore. Shouldn't laugh anymore? <laughs> Shut up, nigga. <laughs> damn it. Is being scared of planes really such a big deal? Everyone obviously thinks I'm a big oaf now. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. What was that? Why did they show a car? We split up into oh it's a taxi my I'm so stupid. We split up and took two separate taxis from the airport to the harbor. From there on, we would be taking a boat to the island. The islands are right next to each other, so the distance of the trip wasn't that great. By boat, it was a leisurely thirty minutes to the land island. When we reached the pier where the boat to the island, an anchor, we saw a figure waving at us. It's been so freaking long! Ah, Jessica. It's been a year since I saw you. You've gotten taller again, haven't you? She kind of fit it up. I like the little purple. Shut up while I'm talking. I like the little purple on the, um, what you call it, on the little corners of the bitches. On the edges, that's what they call it. I like the little purple on the edges. That shit hard. And then she got the little design. She got the little design on her right sleeve. That's your heart. Don't give me that. It's embarrassing when you say it every year. Hey, hey, you've got to be kidding me. Is that really Jessica? Wait a sec. Is this big guy battler? We both stared at each other. She definitely didn't look like that in my memories, but I do remember her crazy way of talking. What's this now? You're kidding me. You look like a woman now. What are these boobs? Even you managed to get a chest. That's an insane thing to say to your cousin? I want to talk to my cousin like that. 
Let me rub. Whoa, hey, 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 calm down, calm down. What are you doing, bro? Don't screw around with me. I'm a blushing flower of 18. Of course, my hair grew longer and I got these. Hold on. We the same age, bro. We the same. Hey, on. I'm 18. She 18. Hold on. My fault. <laughs> what, you think I got boobs just to be funneled by you, loser? Speaking of, you got ridiculously huge. But did you get a bit stronger too? Don't screw with me. I'll show you how much training I've done since back then. She reminds me of Mion. <laughs> You're pissing me off. I'll beat you at your own game. Hold on. This headstrong girl name is Japanese letters. She was born under the same unlucky star as me, sharing the same kind of weird name. Anyway, those Japanese letters is pronounced Jessica. That's not weird. She's just... Fuck. It's just an American name. I mean, I guess that is weird if you're not American, though, huh? That older brother happens to be the oldest son of the Ushiro Mia family, so for now it means Jessica is the direct family heir. Since Jessica and I are the same age and sometimes had little boy and girl squabbles with each other. We've always been used to fighting and joking around together whenever the relatives gather. Jessica grew more quickly, so she had always had me beat in terms of size and physical strength. When we scuffled in a contest of strength, it usually went Jessica's way. So even though I realized I'd grown bigger, part of my mind was still convinced I couldn't beat Jessica. What the? What are you getting all serious for? Hey, this is nothing. Jessica, you've gotten weak. Shut up. I'm a girl, so of course I couldn't beat a guy with physical strength forever, right? Well, you've got a point there. The meat don't put on my arms went all the way to your chest, fat bitch. Oh. <laughs> Ever since Sunny said that, oh uh, y'all, okay, I don't, I probably would have had it uploaded by now, but I recorded some birthday bash corpse party with Sunny, right? I was pigging out at home, and then all of a sudden I was here. Picking out? Wow. Picking up? What? <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop saying it now. The meat I put on my arms all went to your chest. Looks like it'd be pretty even test of strength between my arms and your boobs, don't you think? This nigga wants to touch his cousin so bad. Stop that, you perverted horny fuck. I told you my boobs are for you to fill up. Besides, how about you? Get your cute little dick get a bit bigger with the rest of you. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. I'll be wrong from there. Don't touch my gun. Don't, don't say that. People are going to misinterpret. Honestly, I was so surprised how feminine she had become that I used to joke around like an idiot to hide it. So that become that I had to joke around to hide it. Well, considering what a bossy brat she was six years ago, anyone would be surprised. I guess I wasn't, I guess I, I guess she was, I, I, and I guess she just, I guess she's just as surprised. Fuck, I'm illiterate. She probably wasn't expecting to lose to me in a test of strength. After losing that easily, she must have been shocked at how much I've grown in the past six years. Six years. Once again, I'm being shown just what a huge gap of time that was. Crap, total defeat. It's like I'm no match for you anymore. That's not true. Even Battler must have his weaknesses. Right, Maria? <laughs> Shut up! Cut it out! Let's, let's, Maria, let's keep that a secret, okay? Fall. What hell are you talking about? Sorry, but there's no chance you'll see that weakness of mine now. After all, the nightmare plane trip is already over and done with. You dumb fuck. You done told her your weakness. Only thing left is a nice, quiet splashing of the boat ride. I never thought I'd start loving that piece of junk boat this much. 
Huh? Huh? George, is there something wrong with his head? You'll understand soon. Very soon. At the time, I didn't understand what the hell he meant by that smile. Who is this old fuck? Hold on. What do we have here? Oh! Battler, how big you've grown! Who the fuck is this? It's an old lady with an apron. Oh yeah, that takes me back. I remember now. You remember her, right? It's Kumasawa, the servant. I could never forget you, Kumasawa, old bitch. I mean, old, old Sean. After all, you haven't aged a bit these past six years. If anything, I say you're looking younger than ever. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Lately, my skin's been getting all smooth and silky. And look, having my chest gotten bigger as well. I don't know. I don't look at old lady titties. How'd you like a little feel? You're kidding, right? I don't touch saggy shit. My breast fondling is strictly limited to bouncy girls. That's some real shit. I was quite bouncy in my youth. Don't be shy. Touch my fucking titties. Fuck is this? Don to Don? What is it's Don to Don, right? Daga Daga Don to Don 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 to Don to Don 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 Oh, my fault. Give me a break. It's girls I'm looking for, not old hats. The jokes I cracked about Jessica were turning, were turning on me. Come to think of it, Kumasawa has always been the type to tease people. Kumasawa, stop that now. People with one foot in the coffin shouldn't jump around. To sport with the young is the most rejuvenating medicine. Everybody's got a goober ass life. It's rare for you to come pick us up, Kumasawa. I wonder what's gotten into you. Usually, your lumbago kicks in whenever someone gives you a job to do. Eva, you're as harsh as ever. I found myself with urgent purchases to make, and while I was at it, I thought I would come welcome you all. Although, it does give a bad impression if the one waiting to greet you was a decrepit old woman. Stupid ass laugh, bro. Aunt Ava spoke sarcastically, but Kumasawa bought Chan's years of experience for nothing to sneeze at. She was more capable of smoothly and coyly defecting that comment. Well, it feels bad to say, but old Kumasawa may be past her prime as a servant. She might act as though she's in good health, but between the headaches and the lumbago, her body's wearing out. To tell the truth, the very fact that she's still working is impressive. How old is she this year again? She must be pushing 80 at least. Old oh, fuck. It's incredible that she's still able to act so cheerily. You just seem to get more and more lively. Oh, that's right. Here you are. It's a tea I told you about before. Look, I bought you some. Please do try it later on. Aunt Rosa took a souvenir bag out of suitcase. The thing she remembered a promise that she apparently made last year faithfully bought it. This sort of thoughtfulness was just like Aunt Rosa. She wasn't the kind of person who would forget or break a promise. Kumasawa seemed deeply touched not only that Aunt Rosa remembered this year old promise, but that she would bring a gift to a simple servant like her. This woman was Kumasawa Chio. She's a senior servant who's been working at the, at the Ushiro Mia head family household for many years. As you'd expect for someone her age, manual labor isn't her strong point, but she's a super ser but she's kind of a super servant who can handle just about anything else, from kitchen work to cleaning and laundry. It seems like her only flaws are tendency to slack off. I hear he sh I hear she tries to get away from heavy or troublesome work by playing up her chronic diseases. In Kumasawa's case, this was probably a sign of craftiness rather than laziness. Though, it probably doesn't impress anyone though, but impress those paying her salary. Oh well, she's a, even if she's pretty flaky when it comes to work, I can never dislike her. I guess it's probably because of her cheerfulness and constant smile. 
Hey, glad to see you're selling fine spirits. How's your back doing then? Even with medicine, it's not it's getting one it's not getting one whit better. According to the doctor, nothing can be done for this one. It's what you might call an incurable a, a curable disease. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. What does Sadako do? Hold on. Anyways, Jessica just keeps getting prettier. Good thing she tapes after Natsuhi. Really? Personally, I don't think we look alike at all. I mean, I don't even want to be like my parents. That got zero respect for him. Damn. Now, you shouldn't say such things. So, there are quite a few people who wouldn't want to be like their parents in our family. I want to look just like this handsome ass motherfucker right here. This nigga look good as hell. I want I want to look like him. But like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the way he looks, bro. He look, he look cold, bro. He look, he, he look like he handle business, bro. Ah, that's me. I don't want to be like this nigga. You sure as hell better not take after me. Your nose looking like mine already pisses me off. What are you talking about? You're surprisingly alike, you and father. Come on, you can't be serious. Just how am I like that? You're a lot like him, especially in how arrogant and prideful you are. Father's blood is especially strong in you and Nissan. Wouldn't you say so, Rosa? Oh, absolutely. Why she look like that? She looks evil! Cross Nissan and Rudolph are almost unbelievably like dad. Alright, alright, already. Why am I the only one under fire from the girls? Hideyoshi, give me a hand. Yeah, yeah. My, my, Rudolph. You're always so popular with the ladies. I'm jealous! <laughs> As usual, you're popular enough to make me jealous. Well then everyone, shall we head over to the boat? Come on now, Maria, let's get on the boat together, okay? Get on the boat together! Everyone gets on the boat together! Oh my fucking goodness. I hope nothing happens to that sweet little girl. I hope nothing happens to her. Hell yeah, this time around I'm not gonna be scared. I'm used to being shaken by the waves. With that piece of shit fishing boat, I'm less afraid of the shaking than the engine breaking down and the boat drifting off. Oh yes, battler, I forgot to tell you. That fishing boat was completely worn out, so it was taken out of commission a few years back. Now we get to take now we get taken to the island in a different boat. Oh yeah, right. It's Battler's first time in the new boat. It's super comfy. And freaking fast. It can go at crazy high speeds. That means less travel time, right? That sounds great! Having to worry about singing is less scary than being on a plane. But it'd still be awesome to get it over with as quick as possible. Is Battler gonna fall, fall again? That's only on airplanes. Everything's fine now. Anyway, it's the captain's pride and joy. A kind of modded high-speed boat. Seems he's got it pretty souped up. He was bragging about how he attached four high-efficiently propellers to make it break 40 knots or something. He talks about it all the time. I've even, I've sort of memorized the spiel. Yeah, I've got it memorized too since we hear about it every year. Kevin says he's been obsessed with modding ever since he lost a speed contest with a foreign boat ages ago. According to him, that opponent managed to break 30 knots with just a fishing boat. And his thirst for revenge got him to build an awesome all-new super high-speed modded boat. I'm sure you'll just love it, battler. Super high-speed modded boat. 
Our first thought was that this would be much better than some beat up boat that might sink at any moment. But for some reason, I got this feeling of foreboding. <laughs> foreboding. <laughs> Probably just overthinking it. Uh, Oversinking it. Hold on. Fuck. That wasn't clever at all. I'm dragging it. Hey, battler, maybe you should just swim to the island. Battler, you shouldn't lean over the railing too much. You might fall. Fall, fall! Fall, fall! Damn it! This is why you all grinning back there! So this is a super high-speed boat that the captain started modding. Oh yes, that piece of junk fishing boat from six years ago doesn't hold a candle to this guy. Oh, it's shaking, it's shaking, it's shaking! I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna fall, fall, fall! Fall, fall, fall! I'm gonna fall, fall, fall! If I fall, I'm letting the ocean and drown! Where's the parachute? I mean, where's the boy? Give me a life jacket! Paddler, what the heck are you doing that for? Jessica, Maria, it's not nice to tease. Paddler, if you're scared, just don't come out on the deck. I think you'll be able to calm down if you go up in inside the boat. That's a no, thank you. Shipwreck victims are always the ones inside the boat. The survivors are usually those who stick to the deck. So I'm staying right here. But it's shaking! I'm gonna fall! Ah! Shake! Gonna fall! Maria, I told you to behave yourself! But Battler, it looks like you really can't handle it. I'll go tell the captain to slow down for you. Before you fall, fall, fall. Whoa, and Rosa, thank you! I can tell you now that safe, slow driving is definitely the way to go, even on a sea. Don't do that, Rosa. Trials and tribulations are important for young men. Isn't that right, battler? You better be able to overcome a little scare like this. Otherwise, you'll never be able to go to Egypt with your arm. Oh, I didn't hit you're so mean! No, I'm gonna fall! Life jacket, parachute! Wait, you gotta spin it around and think that way. What's the enemy aiming for? Is he doing this to scare me? If that's what he's aiming for, too bad, like hell, I'll be scared! But no, I'm gonna fall! Oh my goodness. So after I made a huge fool of myself for a while, Aunt Rosa had a talk with the boat captain and he slowed down for a more manageable speed for me. That's a bit better. Thought I was gonna die earlier. Apparently the max speed I could tolerate is extremely slow. But that just now is completely insane. The whole boat was shaking, sliding and leaping on the ocean surface. Felt like I was riding on the back of a flying fish. Jessica was still goo goofawing, goof goofawing at me as I leaned against the railing, tired and disheartened. I lost in that strength contest earlier, but I'm glad to know I'm no worse off where it really counts. But seriously, go ahead, laugh. One of these days, we're gonna find your weakness and get back at you. Why are you so... <laughs> nigga, leave her titties alone, bro. Damn. Yeah, sure. Good luck with that. <laughs> battler, all weak. Uh, yeah, Battler, all weak. I want to die on land, not in the ocean or the sky. Maria was patting my back, so I patted her head in return. Her expression was blank as usual, but I realized she wanted to console me. She's so sweet! Battler, the captain's throwing in drinks to make up for this. Would you like one? To calm your, tum yourself down? 
George and Kumasawa brought us all ice cold cans of soft drinks covered in beads of water. Judge for Kumasawa's big grin. Our parents inside the boat were probably all rolling around laughing at any moment of pure terror. Damn it, I'm so embarrassed. I can't bear to face any of them. If I didn't change the subject somehow, I had a feeling I'd be the butt of everyone's joke for the whole trip. So I tried to think of something harmless to talk about. Oh, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. How are Uncle Krause and Aunt Natsushi, Natsuhi doing? Well, man and mom. Unfortunately, they're fine. I wish they were fucking cat. So every other word that comes out of their mouth is study, study, which pisses me off. I'm so jealous. It doesn't look like Uncle Hideyoshi or Uncle Rudolph would say stuff like that. <laughs> oh no. Before I had my exams, my parents kept pressing me about it over and over. I thought it was annoying then, but now I'm grateful. I knew it. You really are awesome. Anyway, I have to look after myself. No one tells me what to do. Well, it's not like I listened if they did. Battler, have you still not returned to your parents' home? Well, I kind of go back now and then. I've got lots of clothes and stuff left at the house I was living in until recently. Battler has two houses? Uh, hmm. hmm. Something like that. Why? Why do you have two houses? You got a little fang. That's sweet. Oh, oh, <laughs> stupid sound. Only Maria, who couldn't really grasp the situation, voiced this naive question. However, the others just shot nervous glances at me, choosing not to respond, even though they knew the answer. Look, you can see the harbor now. Look, over there. Whoa. Can you see it? <laughs> saw the harbor, saw the harbor! Apparently Jessica was trying to be nice by changing the subject. Oh well, I'd rather not talk about it if I can help it. But it's uncomfortable to have it treated like some kind of weird taboo. I don't mind it that much myself anymore. I may be a member of the Ushiro Mia family. But the truth is that for the last six months, I've been living with my grandparents on my late mother's side. I've even been using her family name. Whenever those grandparents passed away one after one after the other, I basically had no choice but go back and live with the old bastard. Don't get me wrong. I didn't just run away from home or anything like that. The, old, the only one at fault here is my dad. I don't really blame Kyrie. Being able to hold that old bastard's reins and ride him out is no, main, no mean feat. Still, the, the way that old bastard betrayed my mom well, unfortunately, I still haven't fully gotten over that. <clears throat> we'll be getting there soon. George cleared his throat trying to change the subject. Please forgive my indiscretion. It seems this old woman has said too much already. If I have hurt your feelings... <laughs> uh, I don't mind, Danny. No feeling. No one's feelings are hurt. Don't worry, Kumasawa. Kumasawa seemed to regret speaking out of turn, but I was more concerned about being worried about being worried over something like that. So I stood up and passed it off lightly. After that, I had a sip of my drink and headed over to Maria and Jessica, who were gazing at the silhouette on the island. <laughs> Battler, I saw the island. Saw the island. There, there, there. Where is it? Oh, I see it now. Even after six years, the island hasn't changed a bit. Basic bitch ass island. The small island silhouette in front of us had gotten pretty close. His island's name is Rakinjima. It's a small island about 10 kilometers around, located in the Izu Archipelago. Since they call this archipelago the Izu 7, lots of people think there are only 7 islands, but that's not true. There are actually several more, 
And Rock and Jim is one of the minor islands I don't get counted. Even if that weren't the case, I doubt you I doubt you find many people who knew about this island. Only people connected to the Ushiro me or family ever go there. In other words, outsiders and tourists have never had any reason to care about it. So you'll never find this island's name in a travel brochure. After all, all of Rock and Jima is an estate possessed by the Ushiro Miya head family. Only the Oshi Ushiro Miya family lives there, and only people connected to those. Sh Goodness! Man, this feels like a tongue twister. Dang! Oh my goodness. Only the Ushiro Miya family lives there. And only people connected to the Ushiro Miya family come and go to and from there. There's nothing there except a harbor and a mansion. The vast majority of the island is still just uncultivated forest. Such a waste when it could have been made a, such, into a nice golf course or something. However, when you realize that the entire coastline is a private beach, it starts to sound pretty magnificent. You probably guessed by now, but to put it simply, well, the Ushiro Miya family is just rolling in dough. The head family apparently possesses a vast fortune, and dad and the others who make up the branch families have built up plenty of wealth for themselves, finding success in their respective businesses. I've been living a commoner's life in my grandparents' home these six years, so I've completely forgotten. But the old bastard's house really is elegant, and everything about it is tuned to match the snobbish taste of the annoyingly rich. Come to think of it, I guess that makes George, Jessica, Maria, and me wealthy, high-class gentlemen and ladies. Needless to say, none of us think of ourselves that way at all. I don't see myself as being rich, and George, who takes, him, who takes self discipline very seriously, doesn't let himself get too comfortable. Jessica is always complaining that she'd rather move to the city than be rich. And Maria is still a kid who isn't even interested in money at all. Does that attitude really make us any less snobbish? From the perspective of people in poverty who can't pay the bills, we really have been blessed with a lot. This isn't really the place to explain any further, so I won't. Anyway, it's still the same as not being able to choose the parents you're born from. I didn't ask to be born into a rich family. And I don't really think it's not something to be envied. It can be pretty trying when people are prejudiced against you just because you're rich and refuse to, and refuse to judge you by your merits. As I pondered these sentimental thoughts, Maria started shouting and leaned over the railing. Gone. What's wrong, Maria? Did you drop something? Gone, gone! Okay. Maria kept yelling, gone, gone. First, I thought she had dropped something, but while she shot us, Joshua pointed over to the ocean. What's wrong? What's gone? I'll look for it too if you want. What is it? If she dropped something, she probably would have looked down at the floor. But Maria was pointing out over the ocean. One would assume by that gesture that she had spotted something. But she kept saying that something wasn't there. Strange. However, since my last memory of this place was came from six years ago, I was able to spot it before Anaki, who comes here every year. Uh-huh. If I remember correctly, wasn't there a Tori or something on top of the on top of a small crack around here? That's right, it was definitely there. I remember it well since we get closer to the island. It's the first thing to greet us, like a landmark. Wow, you're amazing, Battler. Even though it's been six years, you remember. It was here, wasn't it? I remember too. The tutelary god shrine and the tori like thing that was standing all alone on the crag. Now that you mention it, they are gone, aren't they? I'm pretty sure they were still there last year. Gone, gone! Are you okay? Why are you so afraid of this? Maybe it was washed away by the waves or something. It was a small crag, so it probably got worn out, got worn away over time. Well, that's my theory too. It was last summer that it disappeared. But they say 
They say an enormous lightning bolt came crashing down one evening and smashed the shrine. The fisherman whispered that having a thunderbolt fall upon an honorary tutelary god must be a portent, a portent of, a, of, of approaching misfortune. Kuwabara, Kuwabara. Kumasawa smiled impishly as if teasing us, rubbing her hands together while intoning a Japanese phrase meant to ward off lightning. However, Maria took this seriously and stared fixedly over the ocean where the crack housing the sh shrine was supposed to be. <laughs> A portent of misfortune? <laughs> enough, Kumasawa. Maria isn't old enough to get that kind of joke. It's okay, Maria. It's just a coincidence. Nothing scary is going to happen. Hold on. That's what they all say. They always say nothing scary is going to happen. The next thing you know, you're in a classroom. It's shaking. It's an earthquake. The floorboards are falling and breaking apart. You and your best friends are falling to the floor and all of a sudden you wake up in a abandoned school with a bunch of ghosts and dead bodies, you know? That's how it always works. George put a hand on Maria's shoulder to calm her down, but Maria's sharp-eyed expression didn't waver. Misfortune. Misfortune. Maria muttered that word over and over. Apparently repeating a single word over and over is a habit that Maria's had for a long time. However, since the word she was saying was literally an ill omen, it was a bit creepy. Hey now, Maria. If you say it over and over like that, misfortune will really end up happening, you know? I tapped Maria's other shoulder. Maria whipped her head around, sat on my face, and spoke unblinkingly. Misfortune is coming. Uh, and just where is it coming from? I answered lightheartedly, trying to break the tension in the air. At that moment, Maria held a finger and raised her arm up high and pointed up to the heavens. When I looked up, I saw that the sky was still just as cloudy, but it had grown a great deal more leaden than it had been that morning. That's right, they were saying that a typhoon was approaching. We had planned to spend one night on the island, but if this storm did not pass quickly, I might not be able to make it, make it to school on Monday. Well, I guess it makes for a pretty good excuse to be absent. She apparently sent some kind of misfortune in this cloudy sky. She's been muttering that nonstop for a while now. Girls at Maria's age tend to be pretty impressionable. She's just about that age where girls start to get excited about six senses and whether or not they have psychic potential and stuff. For all we know, this might be due to her child and sensitive nature. It's okay, Maria. The weather might get worse tonight, but tomorrow it'll clear up and become a pretty blue sky. Pretty blue sky? So. That's right. By tomorrow, it'll be a pretty blue sky. There's no rain that doesn't end, no clouds that never clear. She looks like, shut up. You're talking stupid. Rain that doesn't end? Clouds that never clear? I know the typhoon's coming, but soon it'll go away. It'll be okay, Maria. Oh, hold on. She's tweaking. Wait, she's tweaking. Maria started yelling. Uh, uh. It looked as though she was having a tantrum because no one could understand what she was trying to say. What in the world was she desperately trying to warn us about? Unable to understand her, we couldn't help but feel a vague sense of misfortune. I've heard that everyone can feel the supernatural. But that weakens as you age. That might mean that Maria, the youngest of one of us all, still possess some kind of sense that the rest of us had lost. I wonder if that sense is sending her a warning. At that moment, Kumasawa quietly opened her mouth. 
Rumor has it that long ago Rock and Jima was. Let's not talk about that now. Just as Kumasawa was about to tell some kind of story, Jessica sharply interrupted her. Jessica's tone was extremely firm for her. I wanted to push her further just out of simple curiosity, but judging by the look on Jessica's face, whatever Kumasawa was going to likely, whatever Kumasawa was likely to say was probably going to make Marie even more uneasy. If I did try to press her for the story, the odds were pretty good that it wouldn't be anything bright and cheery. <laughs> I do apologize about that. The wind here is hard to bear for the elderly, so if you would excuse me for now. Gossiper has no reason to hang around after they've been told to stop chatting. When Kumasawa finally realized she'd overstepped her bounds, she went back inside the boat. After she left, Uncle Hideyoshi showed up in her place. After he'd arrived mid-conversation, he completely failed to notice a complicated atmosphere that hung about the scene. So he refreshingly and unwittingly swept that atmosphere aside. So in the end, it was his lack of tact that brightened the mood. Ah, uh, it looks like we're almost there. Okay, just a bit more. So forever at the speed we went today, didn't it? Wonder whose fault that was, you red-haired piece of garbage? Uh, Uncle Hideyoshi, give me a break already. What's up with these stupid laughs? Come on, don't stop there. Seriously, thanks to Battler here, it's taking forever. Maria probably thought that everyone was just refusing to listen to her. She hung her head, wearing a fretful expression. As she did, George crouched down to meet her eyes and spoke to her kindly. Nothing to be afraid of, because we're all together. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're together. Go ahead and say it. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're together. Yes. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're with each other. That's right, exactly what George said. If we stick together, there'll never be anything at all to be afraid of. And then the boat sinks and everybody dies. Yes. Right, Jessica? Yeah, no doubt about that. What George says is always true, Maria. George, always true. Yes. I don't lie, so trust me. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. George doesn't lie. I trust you. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Not afraid. Maria jumped into George's arms and hugged him tightly. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, look at that. She's not tweaking no more. After George patted her head, she jumped away again. Her facial expression had undergone a 180-degree change, turning back to normal. She was once again the ordinary Maria. Nothing to be afraid of anymore because we're together. Yeah, that's it. You look all better now. You're strong, and that's awesome. I'm awesome. Hey, now, what's going on here? Maria didn't get seasick, did she? <laughs> well, something like that. We'll be arriving soon. The harbor was already drawing near. I guess that's the end of the second chapter. Hey, what's this? Hey, 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 what is this? I don't like this. That's the episode, guys. If y'all enjoy it, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read a mod tap into the next one. I hate for I hate for my recordings of this to be so short, but y'all know how I am. I like 
I don't like to just record and not stop. I like to I like to leave off at like a real comfortable spot. And it's a comfortable spot, you feel me? So I'm gonna leave it off here. If y'all enjoy, like. Hey, if y'all enjoy, like, subscribe, leave a comment because I read them all. And tap into the next one. Peace out, I love y'all.